Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another episode of Investing for the Common Man, the channel that helps you save not just your money, but more importantly, your valuable time with short, concise, instructional videos. Today, I want to talk about volatility in the stock market. If you are a passive, long-term investor, you may not think about volatility very much because your investing strategy is to just ride out the waves of the market for decades until your investments have grown considerably. But if you want to understand how the market works or trade stocks and options more actively, you need to understand what volatility is, how it's measured, and how it will affect your positions. In this video, we will talk about how to protect your investments from volatility and how to use volatility to your advantage. Before we get started, please take a moment to support my channel by subscribing and hitting that like button for the YouTube algorithm. All right, let's dive in. In finance, volatility is the degree of variation of a trading price series over time, usually measured by the standard deviation of logarithmic returns. Now to translate that into English for you all, volatility is just a measure of how quickly prices tend to fluctuate. A stock with high volatility can be prone to erratic swings in share price. A good example would be Tesla, whereas a stock with low volatility tends to make much smaller percent moves like Costco that rarely moves more than a few percent in one day. Now the type of volatility that I've been describing so far is more specifically known as historic volatility. This is something that we can calculate by looking at past data. The equations for historic volatility look like this, but thanks to technology and our trading platforms, we don't actually have to understand how this equation works to incorporate volatility into our trading strategies. All you need to know is that this equation spits out a percentage and the higher that percentage is, the more volatile a stock has been historically. Historic volatility can be a useful number to look at if you want to compare a few different stocks and get an idea of how quickly and how often they tend to move in comparison with one another. But when it comes to trading and options, it's often more useful to look at implied volatility. Unlike historic volatility, implied volatility is not calculated using past data. Implied volatility is calculated directly from the pricing of option contracts on a particular stock or asset. Rather than looking at how volatile an asset has traded in the past, implied volatility attempts to forecast how volatile that asset might be in the future. Just like stocks, options are priced using the bid-ask system, which is essentially a democratic system in which buyers and sellers negotiate the fair value of an option in real time. If you need a refresher on how this system works, check out my video on the bid-ask spread in the top right-hand corner of the screen. Implied volatility for a future time period is calculated using the at-the-money options that expire at the end of that time period. Basically, this means that if traders expect the stock to make a big move in the future because of a high volatility event like an earnings report or new product announcement, then they will likely start charging higher premiums for the options they are selling around that date or event. Higher implied volatility values reflect these inflated option prices. We can see a perfect example of this if we head on over to the current option chain for Facebook. On this option chain, we can see that there is a different value for implied volatility for every contract expiration date. For most of these expiration dates, implied volatility is in the 30 to 40% range. But this one week right here, expiring on July 31st, has an implied volatility of 54%. This tells us that there's some sort of high volatility event scheduled around this date and traders are expecting the stock to make a big move in response to the event. If we come over here and click on this little blue dot in our Thinkorswim platform, we can see that Facebook is scheduled to report earnings on July 29th, just two days before these option contracts expire. While we are here looking at volatility on the option chain, I want to take a moment to mention the numbers that we see displayed right next to our implied volatility values. On any option chain, you will see implied volatility displayed as a percentage, and then a number in parentheses with a plus or minus symbol. This is the market implied move. That means that this number adds together the prices of the at the money options and suggests how much the overall market expects the underlying stock to move between now and the expiration of these contracts. As you can see, for the contracts at the top that only have one more day until expiration, the market only expects Facebook stock to move a few dollars because there is little time between now and then. But if we fast forward to our July 31st contracts right after Facebook reports earnings, 
the implied market move is remarkably higher with an expected move of $26.5 per share. Now implied market moves are rarely completely accurate, but they can give us a good idea of what other traders are expecting and can help us when we plan trades and select strike prices for our various option strategies. For an option trader, implied volatility is incredibly important. As a general rule of thumb, it is best to focus on being an option buyer when volatility is low and an option seller when volatility is high. This may seem counterintuitive, but if volatility is high, that means that option contracts are more expensive. If we have to put more money in to buy a call contract, that increases our maximum risk on the trade if we are wrong and the stock moves against us. The same goes for selling options. If volatility and option prices are low, then we don't get to collect as much premium for the assignment risk we are taking on as the contract seller. It is better to be on the other side of that trade, buying options when implied volatility is low so that any spike in volatility will work in your favor, increasing the value of your options and adding to your profits. We will go much further in depth about this risk reward trade-off in future videos that cover specific option strategies. If options are new and unfamiliar to you, be sure to go back and watch my introduction to options series from the beginning. The last thing that I want to talk to you about on the topic of volatility is the VIX, which is often referred to as the fear index. The VIX is an index created by the Chicago Board Options Exchange that is a popular indicator of overall volatility in the stock market. The VIX is calculated by aggregating the weighted prices of S&P 500 puts and calls over a wide range of strike prices. It is known as the fear index because as investors and hedge fund managers get nervous, they generally start to buy option contracts as insurance policies to hedge their portfolios. But this increase in demand inflates option prices, which as we all know will increase implied volatility and cause the VIX to rise. As an informed investor, it is important to keep the VIX on your radar to monitor investor sentiment. If we look at the long-term chart of the VIX, we can see these large spikes that correspond with historic market crashes when stocks plummeted and fear took over the market. Now that we've developed a basic understanding of different metrics that we can use to gauge volatility in the markets, in future videos we can incorporate volatility into our trading strategies to increase the precision and profitability of our trades. The wise investor Warren Buffett once said, be fearful when others are greedy and greedy when others are fearful. If you learned something today, please don't forget to hit that like button and leave a comment below. Until next time, keep calm, stay healthy, and happy trading. Mm-hmm. <laughs>